it's just an unreciprocal society and it's a society that doesn't care about you or value you. When you get home, you've done all this work and you have a family who is like, why are you home late? You know, and in video games, which is often where people go in easy case, video game worlds, they're worlds with rules. Mm -hmm. You do X and Y happens. Mm -hmm. You do Z and the F happens mm -hmm. every single time. Or the world is fair. Known die roll modifier attached. Yeah. It, it is a world that feels fair in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think in the US, Japan is just further along civilizational collapse than we are. Exactly. Um, we're we're, we're going to be in 10 years or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. If we get there, people feel their lives there are just much less meaningful. Um, and so this sort of return and reward. Uh, for work is deeply meaningful to them. But I think that there's other reasons why this, this form of anime has become popular. Would you like to know more? Hello, hello. gorgeous. <laughs> I know, same time. Well, hello, Simone. So we were talking about something and you spontaneously had this idea, which just enchanted me because I think you might be right. Ooh. And sometimes when we're looking at the world, there's these little nagging questions which persist beyond reality where it's like what on earth is going on here you know right. <laughs> you're talking about a big one with sexuality i'd say is why is it that gay males and straight males are more likely to find the opposite gender repellent than gay versus straight females that's where we can say something is going on here and we can use these sorts of persistent differences or unusual patterns to suss out deeper things that are going on within a population. Mm. Now, in anime, there are actually many of these. Uh, and in Japan, there are many of these. So our audience may not know this, but my wife was born in Japan. <clears throat> and she spent a lot of her childhood going to Japan to trips and stuff like that. You know, for her, it was sort of like her home away from home. And her middle name is actually Haruko. So we even have a, a Japanese middle name. And what one, so we're going to go over a few different questions that we've seen sort of persistently in anime. And I, I'll go over the three that I know we're going to cover, and then we might come up with some others. The first one is, why are, mm, what's the way to say this that won't get the video? Oh. Why do females who phenotypically present as youth <laughs> appear in specific situations within anime where if they were presenting that way in live action within most Western countries, everyone would literally immediately be arrested? Yeah, it would be super um, legal. <laughs> why is this such a normalized thing within anime? Mm -hmm. That is question number one. And I would point out that as time has gone on, I have seen this more and more within high production anime. To the point now where it's just almost totally normalized. Mainstream. Where it would be almost a little weird if it didn't appear even once in an anime. It, it would be like an anime without a an episode where they go to the beach or uh, onsen the, the onsen or the, the hot springs or the a beach episode you know it's just a, a thing right if, if i if i saw a harem comedy and one of the characters wasn't oh you know i'd be like okay what's going on here oh note here a harem comedy is anime where a number of women are all interested in one man it does not surprise me why anyone would find that interesting but that's that's nothing so then the next question we have is why does so much anime take place in high schools? Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting question because you do not see any other uh, art form across any other culture I'm aware of. Almost all of it only takes place during one stage of an individual's life. Right, yeah. And, and especially none where it's their high school age. And then the final question is... What is going on? This actually came from a, a comment. I, I personally wouldn't find this to be that interesting a question, but it may have interesting answers. What is going on with all the Azekai anime? That's anime where people are transported to another world. Why Isekai. is this a popular genre right now? Mm. All right, so let's go to the first question. You had 
an idea that sprung to you one day, and I think it may be accurate. Yeah. So we were watching an anime in which there's a dynamic like this, basically where like a, a salary man wakes up in fantasy video game world and then, you know, ends up in one of these relationships. And I think most people make the least charitable interpretation of these types of relationships and why people are interested in them. This last night we were watching this anime called My Unique Skill Makes Me OP Even at Level One, where this salary man basically wakes up in a video game world and starts befriending people. And his before we go further with the anime explanation, I want to explain what makes it such a unique anime hmm. from a from a watching it perspective. Yeah. It, it, it is so clearly a just a desperate fantasy of what if life wasn't terrible yes. um, in every single angle of the anime that it breaks down many ideas to much more simplistic tropes than they would normally be broken down into. It's not a particularly good anime or anything like that or funny anime or anything like that, but it is notable in its simplicity and honesty was what it's trying to do. So continue with what you're saying. Right. So the main character immediately <clears throat> makes a friend and the friend he makes is phenotypically very... Phenotypically presents as a young human female. Yes. And you expect to make the least charitable interpretation of why viewers would be interested in this kind of relationship, which is precisely why you expect if this were all to be live action, that it would be highly illegal. However, the more we watched the show and we saw like the dynamics of their relationship play out, the more I came to realize, one, this show is the fantasy of a beleaguered salaryman. I mean, careers in Japan are, are famously brutal. The hours you're expected to work, the unpaid overtime you're expected to work, the long nights drinking. It is, it is a toxic work culture. And this is the fantasy of not being in that work culture and also being appreciated for your work and being really good at your work and getting things done all the time. It's sort of just this fantasy of everything but the, the, the Japanese work culture that still pervades the nation. And <clears throat> when you look at what's happening in his life, it, it's, to me, a, a picture of what people, what humans in Japan would like life to look like. And it's not this untoward type of relationship I think people would expect it to be. I think it's actually cosplaying as a parent. But that Japan lacks the cultural shorthand for a man wanting to be a parent. And so it's instead it manifests as this perverse type of relationship or or is kind of implied to be that perverse type of relationship when like really maybe the trope that is being played out in many of these animes with these phenotypically what is it what use the word use the word that's safe for monetization uh, phenotypically youthfully presenting females. Yes, maybe all the animes with these tropes are really more playing on the audience's desire to be a parent and to take care of young people and to raise people and, and experience the satisfaction of taking care of someone who loves you and appreciates you and admires you. And that reminded me a lot of an anime, I think it's called something like Lotte, L-O-T-T-E, okay. um, where uh, one of these characters who, that you're talking about is a succubus. Um, <laughs> and so you, you would also totally not um, charitably interpret that because they're right. a succubus. Well, no, and it's clear that, that the relationship is, yes, while there are like, obviously it's a very questionable relationship, but it is very focused on fathering her. And th there is actually sort of a sub genre of, I'd call it father animes, mm. uh, where it's about a guy who either somehow gets attached to a young girl or takes on a fatherly role. But mm. often these have, to me, slightly questionable things going on in them. Oh, like the anime in which the, the guy's hand becomes a little girl. Wait, which one is that? You don't know about that? No. And becomes girl. This is, I swear to you, this is a thing. But um. this sort of pure dad is, being a dad is awesome show is not one we have in the US. Yes, so the, the series is called Midori Days, which follows Seji Samawura, who one day finds his right hand replaced with a girl named Midori Kasugano. 
Story. So what I think is going on here, and, and so I'm going to say I don't think that every show that has a character like this is doing this. Agreed. I think that there is a broad differentiation when it's a harem comedy that, or or just a harem show, I guess you could call it, where the conflict or plot is primarily around a large group of girls dating a guy. Mm-hmm. It appears that it is actually about um, the bad thing. The, the bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, however, when the core relationship of the show is one of these types of relationships, mm-hmm. it's often played out much more about, if we're talking about like the instinct it's masturbating, it is being a good father. Yeah, is, is parenting. And this is what I actually think. I think it may be that Japan has become such a parenting and child devoid culture, essentially such an antinatalist or anatalist culture that many of the people actually creating these animes and, and, and playing out these relationships think they're doing the bad thing. Like they think they're pandering to the bad thing, but subconsciously they're pandering to a desire to raise children and be a Which parent. Which is like deeply sad. Yeah, they, um, yeah, but no, doesn't it kind of resonate? Doesn't that kind well, of make sense? Does, and here's another thing that I've noticed in the genre of shows where a dad has to be a good dad to a girl that you know, it, it, it's always that the girl is thrust upon him, almost never in any of the ones I can think of, that he has her biologically. Yeah. It's usually that he got her through a marriage or through who he was dating or yeah. Like yeah. randomly was abandoned by her, her family. Mm-hmm. A, a great recent example of one of these shows is Spy Family. Yeah. Anime. Yeah. Um, Although keep in mind, again, in her, Japanese culture, the parenting culture is also very toxic. And typically in yeah. that culture, the mother does all of the child rearing, just all of it. So also I think it's, you know, if, if a man wants to actually raise a, a kid, there is no existing cultural trope for that. Like they have to be foisted upon them in some strange situation because there would be no normal situation in which they would be involved in child rearing. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I think that, it, and, and also it can be like, there's certain things that people don't want to admit to themselves given their cultural norms. Mm-hmm. And it might be that wanting to be a dad is actually a harder thing to admit to oneself, like wanting to be a good father and failing at it, yeah. either because you were stuck at an office all day yeah. or because you were never able to find a partner. Yeah, uh, Failing at that is harder to admit to oneself than failing to, you know, secure one of these bad relationships. It is also so high stakes. Wanting to become a dad, if you screw up, if you don't do it right, it's, I think it's a much scarier thing even to aspire to, frankly, because of this is a human life. You can screw up pretty much anything else, a marriage, a career, and in the end, you're not that bad of a person. But if you screw up an entire additional human's life that you created, like- (laughs) An entire additional human life. I I mean- (laughs) It's true, though. So I, I like the theory. I, I don't think it's right everywhere. No. But I think it's right a number of times because I definitely see it. Like in the anime that we were talking about, the first one that we're watching right now, their relationship isn't really sexualized at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, like sort of background is implied that they're like dating or something. Like he invites her to live in his house immediately. Remember? Um, yeah. Well, it's, well, I don't, yeah. Again, I think what's going on is creators assume that they're doing the bad thing, but what they really want is the good thing. Cause also consider how asexual Japan is. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's both like really sexual and that there's prostitution and there's, you know, obviously like all this, this anime with fan service, like it is, it is obviously a very, it's a much more sexually free nation in some ways, but then also it's a very sexless nation. So I think that many people think they just assume that some feeling they have is a sexual perversion instead of a like wholesome instinct. I, again, I think that's what's going on here. But, but the anime's core thing that it is masturbating in, a, in an individual mm. is just somebody appreciates me for the work I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm and admires me and I can do good work. work. Yeah, I'm doing work to support this surrogate family mm-hmm. and they and 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 the work when i put effort into it actually yields rewards yeah like it actually works <laughs> it actually works it yields rewards i yeah. come home and the family appreciates me and gives me homemade food i really don't need that much to be happy and we're not even getting that <laughs> well it's so sad that that's the fantasy that this yes. is this impossible otherworldly fantasy. And and this actually might bring us into why Izuke shows are popular more broadly. And I think that you can see that from this anime hmm. is, and it's, it's sort of spelled out explicitly in this anime, that in our world, in the real world, 
He can work as much as he wants. He can end up, you know, falling asleep at his desk, doing overpaid work at his office every mm -hmm. single night. Mm -hmm. And he may still be randomly fired. He may not get a promotion. Yeah. He may, you know, there's, there's no assurances. It's, it's like you're grinding like you would in a game, but there is no payoff and everything is systemically unfair. You know, mm -hmm. you try to do the good thing. There's opportunities to do the good thing in an office, you know, take responsibility for something for some other person not being punished, but you don't do it because realistically, you know, you're just going to end up getting punished for that. The other person really has in no position to help you because you help them. Mm -hmm. It's just an unreciprocal society and it's a society that doesn't care about you or value you. When you get home, you've done all this work and you have a family who is like, why are you home late? You know, and in video games, which is often where people go in easy case, video game worlds, they're worlds with rules. Mm -hmm. You do X and Y happens. Mm -hmm. You do Z and F happens mm -hmm. every single time. Or the world is fair. Known die roll modifier attached. Yeah. It, it is a world that feels fair in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think in the US, Japan is just further along civilizational collapse than we are. Exactly. Um, we're we're, we're going to be in 10 years or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. If we get there, people feel their lives there are just much less meaningful. Um, and so this sort of return and reward. Uh, for work is deeply meaningful to them. But I think that there's other reasons why this, this form of anime has become popular. I, I think that the biggest is unfortunately a pretty boring one. So occasionally when there are shifts in media or how the USA receives anime, mm -hmm. um, uh, the animes that are popular within that exact cycle of anime become quote unquote classics, even if they're not particularly better than other anime or something. You're like saying that. isekai animes because of their genre, are just more likely to be globally popular? I'll explain. This takes a bit of explanation historically. Okay, yeah. So in the U.S., if you're talking about really famous animes that became popular because of this, mm -hmm. well, you could say, what were the first animes that were really translated and distributed in the U.S.? You are looking at Sailor Dragon Moon. Ball Z, and you are looking at... Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon, yeah. And to, those are both seen as like these really important big animes, but it's really just because they were animes that came out when the very first animes were being translated. So a lot of people were engaging with them. Yeah. But what anime was the big anime the first year where you had Crunchyroll and streaming being big in the US? This was, this was in the early days of all this where people were really getting into streaming. Well, this was an anime called Sword Art Online, which was oh. an Izake anime. And because of its popularity, many people engaged with anime through the lens of this genre, mm. and it artificially inflated the popularity of the genre. I hate to say it, but that's what's going on there. Mm, um, I don't necessarily agree, but it, it, good theory. A good, okay, okay. But there's another thing that I think is, is, is really important with this, which is also that it is a very good genre for getting across so so it, it's a very just a good genre for a few reasons in terms of storytelling one it makes it very easy to explain to people who are in our universe you and me the rules of a different universe because they are getting to figure out these rules through another individual and th that makes perfect sense. Okay, you want to explain rules in a way that someone in our universe could understand. Well, Izuke anime would be a perfect way to do that. Hmm. Two, they often last over an individual's lifetime, or they're much more likely to last over an individual's lifetime than other types of anime. Often, this comes with the death, the birth, growth trope. And yet, that's actually pretty rare in a lot of other formats of storytelling, yet it can be pretty impactful when you see major life milestones of an individual and you get to know them better. By the way, if anyone's wondering what my favorite Izuke anime is, it is The Familiar Zero. That's a great anime. But anyway, so what was I going to say? Um, I think, I, I think I, I disagree in terms of what me. has made them so popular. I just think people hate the real world. You know, the, the same reason why in Japan you see all this Izuke, this Izuke anime is for the same reason why you see all this escapist zombie apocalypse stuff right. in the United States. 
but why not just do generic fantasy then? So in the US, when you're creating a fantasy world, you don't often have somebody from our world randomly put Yeah, it but in. it's it's super an American form of escapism is doomerism and prepism. It's like culturally our thing. Whereas in Japan, escapism is is like through digital means and video games. I just think it's like it's sort of the outlet that we go to, the de facto outlet. I would argue more Americans play video games and would identify themselves as gamers than preppers. I will say that you are right that an American genre that is much more popular here than in other countries due to our culture is the fantasy of the world falls apart and you are prepared and dealing with it. Yeah. But, and that is, that is not as popular in other, actually really interesting. I also think Japan is, is more in terms of the games that, that you see coming out of it. Although I'm, I'm way less well-versed on this shit they are more japan produces more fantasy games whereas like stuff like fallout and, and first person shooter games are more likely to come out from american game designers yeah. so i think you're also again you're missing yeah video games are big in america but they're also survivalist doomerism war zombie apocalypse video yeah, games. i was also thinking to what you were saying when you're talking about zombie apocalypse where even the fantasy of a zombie apocalypse is often quite different in japan mm -hmm. than dom 100 right that has much more of an Izake fantasy. Are we? Are you talking about the one where the guy is his job? an office worker and he's okay? Yeah, where? Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. In Japan, zombie apocalypse is oh my god! I don't have to do my job anymore. What's my bucket list now that we're in a zombie apocalypse? I'm going to go on a road trip. I'm going to go to an onsen. Yeah. Whereas, like in America, it's oh, we got to survive. We got to like reinforce. We got to move to family. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it is. I think it's a cultural thing. I think I'm right here. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think you are right as well. A, okay, okay, okay. So the next question is, what Why is going school? on with all the high school shows? Yeah. Why is anime so frequently told through the perspective of a high school? Yeah, yeah. It's like you would think that, that in Japan, there are no adults. <laughs> it's just children in high school always. Yeah, yeah I, I think a lot of that's because life after high school just sucks so hard in Japan and lacks like meaning and and cultural celebration which i think also plays a role in in, in antinatalism you know and that like adults aren't really celebrated all adults really do is work and then die so what's the point whereas high school has a lot of weight in japan and is also very heavily culturally celebrated i mean one there's a huge amount of investment that goes into children's education so at every stage in life if you're a parent you're like obsessed with your kid's education if you're a kid you're obsessed with your education because you, you're forced to be and then you know there's this just like the narrative arc around it is so meaningful but that the exams you take in you know in, in middle school to get into high school are so so freaking important and then your life in high school is so important because the exams you use to get into college are going to determine which social class you're in and your entire life for the you know everything after that it's just so weighty and there are all the narratives around that so then it, it's it's just hard to even create a story around post high school life because there is no focus there's no cultural obsession around that yeah, I'll be honest, when I see animes that are about post-high school life, they're usually pretty depressing. Yeah. Like, usually the focus of them is how terrible life is. Well, yeah, if, if it were, or they're the isekai anime, where it's just about, oh, I, I'm not an adult anymore. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'm in a fantasy that's world. an interesting point. Isekai mm -hmm. animes often take people who are adults. Adults, yeah. So another thing that I would note about this that I think is really telling is... When I look at Western shows, and we talked about this in our episode of, you know, you already live in the perfect world. Uh, in the Western concept of a fantasy, you are typically working with like a meaningfully diverse group of people to in some way save the world or prevent the world from collapsing to do something that matters. Um, and we have tropes where we understand what it is like to do something that matters. Mm -hmm. I wonder if in Japanese society, there isn't even a trope of an adult living a life that matters unless they were born of like a specific caste. So there something. is, yeah. If you're a samurai, if you're a ninja. Oh, and they do life shows matters. around that. Mm -hmm. But if you're mm -hmm. not like a samurai or a ninja. You can't like, basically if you live in the modern world, no. I mean, I guess in, oh God, what was the one about the, oh, Death Note. But like everyone's kind of a kid still, even though they like work for Death Note. Well, but right. isn't, 
I, I mean, the, I mean, the, yeah, they are like well, they're, but they're working for police departments, except for the the, no, the, the one the, really smart guy, but he's high school aged. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah I guess because the other characters, I think, yeah. remember, like they even find it at a high school or something. Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna check right now because I'm pretty sure you're wrong about that. I, I'm really oh. Because I guess there are also like fantasy anime. Like, what about the one with like police and ghosts or something that you were watching the other day? Seventeen years old is how old they are. He's seventeen, <sighs> almost yeah. an adult. Uh, they, but what about the one about like police that you were watching the other day? Kind of no, it's, so it's it's people. This was something about exercising curses, and curses were like represented as demon things. I was just watching the background. So I guess yeah, again, only uh, fantasy it, worlds are only historical, this like is so samurai. Cool. Mm. They're, they 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 are drawn a bit older looking, but yeah, they're still in an academy. It's a oh yeah. wait, so wait wait. Even in this adult, like adult police force world where they're putting their lives on the line, they're, they're still in high school. Yeah, they're in a school. They're in a school for killing <laughs> oh, curses God. or demons, basically. And <laughs> yeah, just can't have adults be adults unless they're leaving their adult life. Yeah, I just I just think you know life sucks that hard as an adult in Japan. <laughs> which which I don't know. I think Japan is awesome. I I love it. I love the food. I love the culture. Oh, I'll, I'll give some other uh, anime recommendations here I've loved. So another Izuke that I, I, I thought was pretty good was Shield Hero. I just really identify with the main character in that, which is if you go through hardship, you sort of end up overleveled when you then meet with people again who oh. are supposed to be gifted or privileged. Um, oh, and, I thought you really liked what Demon Slayer as well, right? Was that what it was called? Goblin um, Slayer? The really dark one. Which one? About the guy who just kills goblins. Oh god, I love Goblin Slayer. Goblin yeah. Slayer, culturally, no anime speaks to me as much as that. I'm like, this is my culture represented in anime. I I have never felt so spoken to. Personality-wise, no anime, no anime speaks to you as much as Food Wars which is just personality-wise the most oh, personality-wise that's definitely my favorite my yeah. favorite anime of all time my favorite show media piece of all time might be food wars yeah. though i also really like demon king domino that one i i really feel a lot of kinship with the character that's the one where the the guy wants to be the pope but he is foretold to be the demon king oh that one's cute cool. well and you also really that anime where everyone's way too smart and the man's really sad. Oh, I love that one. That one is called Code Geass. Code Geass, yes. Um, Burn Logan, though, I also really like. So these are, these are a few. Code Geass. Um, Shout out to who's that really sad character? Oh, gosh, the one who just killed Rufo you. Rufo or something. His name is like Heart or something. Or He's like a bad guy, but then he becomes obsessed with the main character and he can stop time. You just feel really bad for him. You just um, feel really bad for yeah, the bad guy. Yeah, just... You feel terrible. Remy. You sort of feel terrible for everyone in Code Geass, but I, I, I <laughs> like it generally because like, miserable, well, smart people. The movie. Oh, and by the way, anyone who's watching Code Geass and thinks this is all you need, it's a ripoff of Dune. By the way, for people who don't know that, you really think it's a ripoff of Dune. Dune? It's more what? fun because it takes place in a high school. Maybe oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's better in high fun, school. But he's clearly so you know if it, Dune. If Dune were all in high school, I bet it would be better. I mean, the, the answer at the end of the show, spoilers, by the way, is the God Emperor of Dune answer, which again is what we talk about in our world as well, that that's the, 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 the uh, virus that's controlling society right now is acting like a God Emperor that is uniting all of these factions that never would have united before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we're curious to know if there are any anime that we should be checking out. Let us know in the comments because we, we basically are too cheap to pay for any other subscription yeah, for streaming. We don't have Netflix. Central. Don't have HBO, but we do have Crunchyroll. Yeah, please <laughs> help us. Please. Uh, and and this this pains me because I know I'm funding the people who made. What was that? We love them. It's fine. No, Crunchyroll is really. They made this thing where they put all the money that people were giving them. Sorry, I gotta remember. This. High Guardian Spice. I have never heard of this before. In my well, because they tried to hide that they had done this afterwards, where they told people that they were sending money to anime creators, but they actually hoarded the money and then used it to create a Western animated show that was like the most woke show in the world. Everyone working on it was like a 500 pound woman with blue hair. Oh. You know, it, it was the worst. And it showed how little they regarded their fans. People can say, well, why aren't I pirating things? Because we like watching it on the TV at dinner, okay? Yeah, we have one of those evil TVs that only allows you to go in through like legitimate logins because it was. Not that I would pirate things. I'm not saying I would ever do that. I need to be very. You clear. would never. 
you would I, 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 because I wouldn't consider it. Uh, of course, of course. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, guys, let us know. And yeah, I enjoyed this conversation. Who knew that watching anime would lead to so much contemplation about culture? But yeah, come on, I guess we all knew that. We all knew yeah, that. well, and I think it, it can help us be grateful. You know, even watching this anime where the escapism is that he comes home and he has a, a grateful woman there who has made food for him and cares that he has gone out and worked during the day. And that is something that I already have. So I already lived in his weird fantasy heaven. And now I'm in the post game. And I appreciate that you have created that for me, Simone. Uh, genuinely, I do. By the way, to Rolo. Shout out to Rolo. I'm so Rolo. sorry, Rolo. Someone loves you, Rolo. We're sorry. He was evil though. He kind of deserved it. So you, no, didn't, he didn't. You, you knew that the show was going to let him suffer. That Someone needed to thing. put him out of his misery, but yeah, poor Rolo. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, wait, you love, you didn't even mention that one studio, Studio Trigger, that you love. Oh, yeah, I love a lot of things. Panty, Stocking, and Garter Belt is a great, one of my favorites that they've done. Um, and what about Whole Horse Green? Oh, Pretty Derby. I best like anime Derby ever. That much. If I was going to give another anime recommendation, it'd be High School of the Dead. I think it's the best zombie thing ever created. But uh, I just, I think there, there needs to be a special shout out for anime that has just ridiculous premises and pretty derby which is an anime about but it's a bunch not that of, entertaining it's like fine it's, it's like, not but the fact that that someone was like you know it would be a great idea let's make an anime in which girls are horses there are horse girls and they run in races and they're like based off of real horses and therefore we can't like well that's, say that's bad things why about them. it's not so people might not know this but it's actually pretty rare in japan to see so what they they created this anime based on real famous racehorses and it's actually pretty rare to see it, it like h made of it and the reason is is because some of these are like dead like real horses from horse racing and many of them are owned by the yakuza who have an emotional attachment to the horses that the characters in the show are based on and so you would not risk cr creating anything you you do not sully that yeah, you can't you can't rule 63 the Yakuza's favorite horse. And so But I was gonna have one recommendation for what I think might be the best pizza media ever created. It is Food Wars. Yeah. We talked about it before. I suggest people start on season two. It's it gets into the good stuff better, like immediately. Yeah, just to let people know the premise of Food Wars, of course, it takes place in a high school, but it is a high school that is very prestigious and is a food academy. And the primary like plot point of the academy is food challenges so just think iron chef but with students and with fans it's sort of like the naruto arc where it's a school and they're fighting to show how good they are mm -hmm. except the whole thing is done with creative food battles they're like my and hero academia it's, it's, yeah it's humorous but the food battles are great because there are two things that are great about them one is people are making really genuinely gourmet food and you're learning a lot about really obscure culinary practices. So you're actually getting really good at cooking and very informed as a gourmand as you watch the show. But then second, the reactions that characters have to eating very good dishes involves a lot of fan service. And for those not familiar with anime, fan service is where but people jiggly parts jiggle. Like, the humor, it tugs at you. Like I, I laugh and cry and almost- yeah you, you, yeah, you tear up at the episodes. It, no, it definitely like, it it, it gets it nostalgia. It's so much better than Ratatouille. It's like Ratatouille if Ratatouille is good. Oh, actually another one that I had forgotten. Um, uh, uh, Beastars is fantastic. Beastars dark, is like dark. Zootopia, but if there were actual systemic differences between the analogs for people of different ethnic groups. Yeah, and if you wanted to come away from every episode feeling like life is pointless and you want to die. Just, oh, you, you got sad. sad. I like it. It's right. sad. Yeah, I need food wars. I need, I need we food have food. to we have to move on, Simone. But I love you, Malcolm. Goodbye. I love you. Have a great time. You too. <sighs>